heart out on the sea searching for something that really found me i didn't know it but it drew me to it soon i was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Labigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile precision handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Farlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist. This is a special day. My guest is Amanda Lynn Mayhew. She has her own TV show. She loves the outdoors. She especially loves to hunt big game and waterfowl. How can I sum her up? She's an adventure <laughs> woman and enjoys every experience, especially around nature. Today is her first time fishing in Florida. And we check out the weather before heading out and they're calling for big storms, high winds, and dropping air temperature. Great if you're planning on doing some waterfowl hunting. Not so great for fishing. It's the worst forecast you want to hear when you plan on taking someone fishing for the first time in Gulf waters and offshore. While the Gulf is already rough, the pass is calm, and just to get Amanda warmed up, we're gonna start trolling a spoon to see if we can get a small fish, like a mackerel or a bluefish to hit. We just thought we'd drop a spoon in because we're on our way to fish some piles. So she's got a fish on, looks like a mackerel. <gasps> we got lots of fish feeding, but this is your first mackerel, right? This is my first mackerel. Okay, you might want to put the clicker on just so the line doesn't go loose. And then uh, we'll actually flip it. It might fall off. Yep, um, trying to think where the net is. I know we got one in the boat. Let me grab it. That's a, a small Spanish mackerel. That is a beautiful yeah. fish. He's got big teeth, so maybe you might want to hold onto the spoon just like that. Look, we're tag teaming here. You can see the nice spots on the side. My I don't know if you can see the teeth. See all the teeth? Yeah. It's got lots of little teeth. So the size limit for these guys is 12 inches, but we get them up to like five to seven pounds. So we're not gonna keep them out of the water too long. Okay. I'm just gonna take the hooks out and then we're gonna drop them back. What I'm gonna do, just grab that treble and I'm gonna flip it over and he should just fall off. If all things work perfect, gone. Nice. Good job. Thanks. Our next stop is to fish some piles close to the Gulf Pass. Sometimes it can produce some impressive fish, other times not so much, kind of like a roll of the dice. As soon as we pull up to the piles, we have a friendly dolphin that comes right up to the boat, and all of a sudden it becomes the star of the outing. It's obvious it can read our mind and knows what we're up to and wants to see if it can mooch a fish off us for a snack. Amanda has dealt with lots of wild game, but has never been one-on-one -on -one with a wild dolphin that's not shy. I'm having as much satisfaction just watching her bewilderment as she goes from some human dolphin hand contact. Did I mention Amanda has a lot of self-confidence and no fear? This is beautiful. I know. Wow. Okay, look, we've got some uh, frozen shrimp in the pail, shrimp pail. I've got the special rig here which is a double hook rig. This is called, by the way, in Ontario, you know, or anywhere, it's called a drop shot rig. Yep. So we've got a bell sinker on the bottom, okay. and it's just a loop, so we can take the bell sinker off. Because a lot of times when you travel, and you have the weight on there, it's like slapping everything, hitting the boat and stuff. Hey, there it is, right there. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh. We should call it something. What do you want to call it? I what was know. that What was that TV show with the dolphin? I can't remember. I don't remember Flipper. Either. Skipper? Flipper. Flipper. <laughs> Flipper. <laughs> it was Flipper. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is delicious shrimp that uh, has been frozen. We're going to take the head off, just like that, because that is not very good. You feed it we're going to gonna trim. Oh, yeah, we're going to trim the tail off. Now, you'll notice that I've rigged this. This is a rig that a friend of mine, Dante, up in New Jersey showed me. So the reason this one hook slides around like that, yep. it's been, we're going to put one in here like so. And then the other one, we're gonna trick those fish and we're gonna slide the first one up the line, just like that. Okay. And we're gonna put the other one right here. Notice that I'm going in one side of the shell and the other. Yeah. They'll still steal it. 
Do you want to try I'm yours? Do that? Yeah, I'm going yeah. to do that. So go ahead. Yeah, and chuck it, and then just lift, lift the carapace off. So it's, that's the shell. It peels back, just lifts up. Yeah, like this. Yeah, and that goes over the side. Perfect. Because we want to keep the oh, meat on there. Yeah. The side. Now take the hook that moves up and down, and it goes into the tail. Yeah. Right at the top end, from side to side, right through the shell, Oops. the tail right here. Yeah. One side to the other. From like. No, like this. I'll let you do it though, like that. Okay. Yeah. So it goes in one side, out the other. No, deeper. You want to go through the shell where it'll hold. So you don't want to go like, like that. that. Okay. okay. Now the other one. So. You'll see now the, the hook will slide, right? Yeah. So the other one, put it down and put it through the shell at the bottom end. It just makes it a little bit tougher for them to take it off without getting hooked, but they still get, sometimes they take the bait. Perfect. We're gonna try to fish close to the piles, but we don't wanna touch them. Cause see all the barnacles that are on them? It's very easy to get hung up and then your line will break because they're really sharp. Okay. And if you get a bite, you set the hook, you gotta get the fish out. So you're setting the hook. Yeah, so the, the fish that we got a chance of catching here, uh, sheep's head like to be around the piles, and you look those up, they're the white ones with the black stripes. Yes. We can get a fish called a black drum, which can be two, three pounds, or up to like 100 pounds. So we might have a... Right here? Right here, In yeah. In this area, and how will, deep are we? This is the Gulf of Mexico. So this is the cut, it's called Boca Grande. So the fish will come in here, All even Goliath groupers, like 300 pound fish, and they'll feed in here, just like this porpoise. It's messing around with us, saying hi. <laughs> Actually what it's doing, it's waiting for us to catch a fish. As Soon as we catch one, it won't touch our line, but it'll want us to give her the fish, or it. I don't know if it's a male or a female. Okay, so we're ready to rumble? We are. So there you go, we're gonna go to the front. All right. We're gonna be bow fishing, and I'll show you, just keep an eye on me and you'll see what I'm doing. You might want to bring that bag of shrimp up here so we can change it up here. Okay, I'm on it. So we're going over the rigging and technique, and all I can think of in the back of my head is that dolphin hanging around close to the boat and listening to every word I'm saying. I think I can hear it talking to me in dolphin language. Catch me a fish. Let's see if I can get this, okay. That's good, let me reel it back up. See what it is here. So this is a mangrove snapper. They're very good eating. This guy's a little bit small. And we got lots of fish for eating, so we're gonna throw them back. Look at the fangs. All these fish have lots of teeth, right? See those teeth? Wow. Beautiful, spiny rays. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take that hook out. Oh, I didn't oh, I bring do. the pliers up. Set the hook, set the hook. Real, real, real. Real, real, oh. Okay, bring it back up. You might have to reload. The reason we're using these small hooks, you know, we're gonna get a lot of smaller fish, but the sheep set especially have very small mouths. Okay. That's why we're using the smaller hooks. Isn't he pretty? That is amazing. They can grow pretty big. Little diamonds. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Camouflage. All right, little guy, you're gone. Good thing that porpoise is away. So, um, we're gonna take that off. Now, while we're targeting smaller fish around the piles, we can see the boat across from us and it's targeting Goliath grouper. I don't think Amanda realizes how big Goliaths get. For her first initiation with Florida fishing, I think we'll stick to fish we can hold in our hands. See what you got. Oh, it looks Ooh. like the same one that you have. No, that's no? a grunt. You know what, I'm gonna get the net. Okay. They're very good eating, but we're gonna be releasing it. Cause we're sports people, right? Really until, yeah, until we gotta eat. This is a grunt. You know, that's actually a good eating size. You'll see why they call it a grunt in a minute. You're gonna hold it, girl. This looks much like the hogfish that we had last night. So it's got teeth, so you gotta be careful. You wanna hold it, isn't that pretty? I do wanna hold it, yeah, look here. how pretty it you is. Can put your hands underneath. Yeah. If the, it pricks you, you know, if you get spine, just scream, like, oh. Just scream. Come on, give me some ground. Arr, arr, arr. It's beautiful. Okay, you know what? Let's stop messing around with it. Okay. We'll throw it back. Yeah, I want to put it. Yeah, you go ahead. You can toss it. Okay. It's grinding and saying, please, please release me. You're being so gentle. I would just I toss it. No. Oh, you want really that dolphin nice. to come by. <laughs> I know what you're up to. This is cute. I give Amanda the grunt to release, but she's thinking about Flipper, her new friend. Time to see if the dolphin likes grunts. Like that. Oh, wow. You know, the technique that we're using here, it's kind of like bass fishing and steelhead fishing. So with the bare reel, I'm flinging it out. You can see I'm letting the line come off my left hand. It's going down about 17 feet. We got a one ounce weight on there. 
And then uh, I'm just gently dragging it along the bottom. Amanda's doing the same thing. Yeah. We fish, get stuck on the bottom. Every once in a while, re-rig, catch some smaller fish, and it feels like it's getting lumpier. Something is up. We catch some more small fish, and our friend Skipper suddenly decides to swim away. I notice birds aren't flying anymore. They're just standing on the piles. I start the motor and head towards the pass to check conditions around the point. I realize the dolphin and the bird knows we're in for some bad weather. I guess I just have a few minutes to outrun a major storm. I give her, running as fast as I can with some angry weather on my ass that's going faster than I am. Been there before, don't mind getting wet, but would rather not. My only plan is to head to an old fish house on a protected flat and wait the storm out. Well, it took over an hour or two. Finally, the rain subsided. Since we're on the shallow flat inside the mangroves, we're gonna try for some spotted sea trout. Only problem is that after a major storm front, fishing is not easy. We tried bait fishing and that doesn't work. We're gonna be casting artificials. Hopefully we can attract some fish. All right, Amanda, <laughs> nice fish. You know what, you better come up here. I quick, know, quick, quick, it's, it's going around the motor. Off. Look, 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 come on up. Nice. Look Good at that. Good fighter, eh? Look. Good oh fish. Oh, my God. I don't know if that's a lady. It's got to be a it's nice amazing. lady fish, I think. If it's a trout, it's a big one. Look at the colors. Yeah, I'm going to wow. get the net because I want you to see it. Let's <clears> go right under the boat. <clears throat> oh, ah, you almost got stuck right around the trolling motor. You sound like those TV. Ah, oh, wow. ooh, ah. Those are my special effects. Nice lady fish. Okay, look, good sized fish. Now what are you gonna do? Pliers are over there. Mm -hmm. If you wanna grab them. Don't they fight great? They do. That was a that was a nice fight. You know, a lot of people. I'm gonna give you a little bit more slack here. Yeah, a lot of people don't like to hook these things. Because? Well, but when they're targeting other game fish, but I think <gasps> That's they're a nice great. Size. Yeah. Okay, you ready to try with the pliers? I'm gonna try, yeah. Uh... Let's see, uh, I'm just trying to get this mesh. Oops, sorry. Uh, no, no, you're doing good. Okay, let's try to get the hook out maybe because I'm trying to see the mesh. Take one out, yep. Yep, you got it. I like the way you're working. You're being so gentle. I am. And that one. Did it hit good? Look, hey, beautiful good. fish. Look at the big eyes. You ready to hold it? I am. You know, How it's am I try to fly it? out of your hands. Good luck. <laughs> I like your death grip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice size. It was a nice size. Yeah, nice for flight. here. Yeah. Sometimes we get them like, you know, even longer by like another 10 inches. I love the look of their tail. And yeah, the purple. Look at the purple yeah, on it. Yeah. You're so gentle. I yeah. Am. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get the hook out of the net. The ladyfish says bye bye. <laughs> and look, you're ready for action here. I am. When was the last time you were rabbit hunting? Uh, I don't. I'm not a big rabbit hunter. What? No. You don't like eating rabbit? Not really. They're Cotton all tail? right in a stew once in a while. Yeah, I love roasted rabbit in a Do frying you? pan. Yeah. Well, Dip them you... in a little bit of flour. You uh, sear them. You sear them on both sides, you know, like, and I cut the rabbit up all in chunks. Yeah. And then you add a little bit of red wine and you turn the temperature down and sear it. Yeah, they're delicious. Hmm. Not as good as these, not as good as these trout, but they're good. You got you know. another one. You didn't even tell me you had one I on. am just a fishing <laughs> machine. What can I tell you? You're talking and catching fish like it's just normal. It's all about the rabbits. You gotta talk about the rabbits. Have you ever shot a rabbit? Yes, I have. Okay. They cry. A white cry, depends. Cry, they yeah. scream. I know you had you hunted jackrabbit. What about snowshoe? Oh uh, no. Cottontail? Um, no. Cottontail. Well, no. No. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm not I, into rabbit hunting. I, I have never been specifically rabbit hunting. For youth hunters, you know, like you know, I think of the 22, you know kids that once they, they uh, they're allowed to hunt. Yeah. I think rabbits is like the main thing, right? You know, it's so? like catching sunfish, yeah, because they're they're plentiful. I mean most places, right? And they can they stop, they don't always run, so the, the kids can learn to get them, you know? And then you teach them how to clean them properly, skin them. While I'm talking about rabbits, I can picture Amanda walking in the dark, 
and getting ready for a goose or duck hunt, wading through swamps, setting decoys, decked out in camel gear, face paint, ready to shoot some supper. Or wait, heading to a blind with a high-powered rifle to wait for a trophy bear to move closer to the bait. Finally, we're talking steady action. The fish aren't big, but here's the catch. You don't need big fish to have fun, just non-stop action. You're so adjusted to just catching a fish on every, on every cast, and I am not. <laughs> you are doing OK. No, I know, but I get excited to each one that I catch. Oh, this could and be, I think it's like, a keeper. Mm, it feels heavier. Oh, wow. I think I'm going to get the net. It's got some bulk to it. Where is the net? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's a nice one. Oh, it's, no! oh, it's still on. Oh. It's still on. <laughs> Can we get it in the net? I got Look it. Look at you, girl. Okay. Nice. I think it's definitely over 15. What do you think? I think I think you're right. I'd like you to hold it up to the grip and grin and say, yeah, baby. Now, this is neat. We've been getting all these little tykes. And then guess who shows up to the party? And you were right. Yeah. It's almost like you know what you're doing. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it. So let me just do the thing underneath the gill plate. Look it. Isn't that a pretty fish? That is a beautiful fish. Yeah. Okay, quick measurement. I'm going to run by you yep, just to make sure. If not, we're going to release it. Kay. But I got a feeling. I got a feeling it's over 15. Yeah, baby, 17 inches. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Amanda is in for a real treat after today's fishing. We're going to enjoy a classy fish meal at none other than Farlow's Restaurant, right on the water. They specialize in serving fresh fish in a classic Florida atmosphere. The weather is good, and we've decided to enjoy their patio. One thing I'm big on is attention to detail, especially when it comes to eating fish. Whether it's in the freshness of the fish, the cleanliness of the kitchen, the fish preparation, and of course the final entree, Farlow's has it covered. Tonight, Chef John Massa is going to prepare us fresh triple tail, an amazing tasting inshore water fish. Triple tail are a wide bodied fish that are ideal for filleting. The chef skillfully uses his fillet knife to make sure he keeps as much fish as possible on the fillet. As fillets are removed, you can see the firmness, which means freshness. A skilled chef handles his fish with care. Whether it's short storage in a cooler before preparing, filleting and making sure each piece of fish is boneless and in prime condition for the hungry customer. You can see he leaves no meat on the vertebrae. That takes practice and skill. Once the fillet is removed, it's separated from the skin by using a longer, wider knife. Careful attention has to be taken to ensure there is no skin left on the fillet. Each fillet is then cut into personal portions around eight ounces in weight. The fillet pieces are lightly coated and placed in a hot fryer and gently cooked for a few minutes on each side. To maintain the triple tail's delicate flavor, it's cooked at a slower heat and each piece is gently turned over so it'll retain its moisture. After cooking, the fish is placed in a lightly preheated oven to keep it warm. The fish pieces are topped off with freshly baked chutney and it's time to enjoy it. Amanda, I'm just gonna explain what this is because this is amazing. Remember I told you that Farlow's is like really well known for their fresh fish? This is triple tail. It's a small, well small, like two to seven pound fish that moves into the Gulf waters close to shore. They like to hang underneath crab traps, the actual ball, the floater that marks the crab trap. They think they're camouflaged and they wait for stuff to swim by. How does it taste? It tastes wonderful. I like the fruitiness of it and it's not overcooked at all. I think it's awesome. So this isn't like a fish fry. I know that the chef actually sauteed it in olive oil first in a saucepan just to get it wet. Then it was broiled. It was broiled. And then they put this chutney on there and it's all fresh. There's even some pineapple on here. There's some red peppers. Yeah, so this is good. like done gourmet. So, you know, to me, the experience, catching the fish is one thing. And to me, it's not about the size or the numbers and everything. But it's like this, you know, getting to know each other, having fun on the water, but then also enjoying a nice fresh fish meal. So how does a girl from up north that you literally grew up hunting and fishing end up being a host 
of a nationally televised Just Hunt hunted series. I'm curious. Isn't that something? That's awesome. It's so surreal. I, I really don't know how it happened. It was never a plan. It was, uh, it just started with being on the Outdoor Canada panel in 2011 as a notable outdoors woman. And because of my social media experience in the fitness industry and just showcasing that I'm a regular hunter and fisherman anyways, it just, one thing led to another and signing on with Cabela's and so did the network contact you? Yes. That's awesome. Yep, they so, contacted hi. me. Coming from a network, would you like to have a hunting series? <laughs> you went, Something like that. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. And uh, I was pretty interested in it. And the model of it, it was three season, three shows per season. So I was still able to hunt as myself and the cameraman would come along. So it was, it's very real. It's very me. It's very true. That's awesome. So where is it now? Now that you're fishing, I think, a little bit more, you've got your own boat, you're sponsored by a boat and a bunch of tackle companies and stuff, are you going to be able to balance it? I think so. What do you think of this Florida stuff? I think Florida is amazing. Because you get used to it, out in the ocean and having I, I nice meals. I don't think I'm going to go home. Look, no sleeves. <laughs> you know, back home, they're getting ready to ice fish. But that's Actually, right. they are ice fishing in some parts of Canada. <laughs> I think they're snowed in in some parts of southern Ontario right now, actually. So do you have long-term goals? Are you just going to go along with the way things are going now, or would you like to do more hunting shows or diversify? So in my whole entire life, I've never had a long-term goal of anything other than to survive. That, that's a good goal. <laughs> so everything that's happened and every journey and adventure that I've been on has just been spontaneous and winging it. You know what? Keep it that way. I think so. I think that's what our life experience is all about. Because I think that when you expect things, you are let down. So if you have no expectations, you never know. Like, look I at like this. That. I like that attitude. It's wonderful. Yeah. One day I wandered out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile precision handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Farlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist.